Hello, welcome to today's Monday Manna. As always, we pray that we find you in good health and in good spirits. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your loving kindness. Thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you have in your heart to do. We thank you for the opportunity to line up with you, to align ourselves with your great and wonderful plans. For your word declares in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord, plans of peace to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a good hope and a future. And so we thank you for that, Father. We thank you for your love towards us. For God, you so loved the world that you sent and gave your only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And then the scripture goes on to say, for God, you did not send your son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, the world might be saved. Thank you for your plan of salvation through your son, who is the Christ. And thank you for the Holy Spirit of the living God, who comes to lead and guide us into all truth. For that, we are grateful, we are thankful, and much appreciative in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Good morning, good morning, good Monday morning to you. This is Evangelist Hutchinson, Danette Hutchinson, Nettie Poo, whatever you want to say. Um, I'm here to help, I'm here to serve, I'm here to give, and it is my honor to do so. To friends and family, I say thank you for your support. For those of you who may be, this is your first time encountering Monday Manna. Thank you for tuning in and you are most welcome. The invitation is open to all. I do want to take a moment to pray also for Ukraine, uh, our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and in Russia, Belarus, Poland, and all of those Eastern Bloc countries who are scrambling for answers. And yet we know the one that has the answer. So let's take a moment and spend just a few moments in prayer um, concerning our brothers and sisters in the Eastern world. Father, we thank you right now. And Lord, for those who are in the Eastern Bloc countries in Europe, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray for their safety. We pray for their protection. Most of all, we pray that you would be the miracle working God that they need. For you are a way maker. You are a miracle worker. You bring light out of darkness, oh God. And so although there are plans in motion from the plans of men, you still rule over this whole earth. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. And for those who may be pointing a finger at you or raising a fist at you or hurling accusations towards you, oh God, forgive them. They simply do not understand, but you are in charge and you are not out of control. Everything that is going on is in your eyesight. So we pray for miracles, signs, and wonders for our brothers and sisters in those Eastern European Bloc countries, oh God, that they may lift their head to heaven and say, truly, indeed, there is a God who cares. For that, we thank you in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. God has a plan. He is not out of control. He is very much in control of what is going on in the spirit realm that is manifesting in this natural realm. And although we don't always understand why things happen the way that they do, just know that God is in control and be confident in that. So today we're going to continue with our series um, so glad to be called woman. We have one more queen that I promised last week that we would talk about. And then as you'll notice on the Facebook post, there will be a recap given by Pastor Hutchinson over all of the, not all of the queens that we've talked about, but he will mention some of the queens that we have talked about. We can't necessarily cover them all unless we take maybe the whole year or six months to do so. So we're going to we're going to cap it off with a recap um, from Pastor Hutchinson and Bathsheba is going to be our um, 
final discussion on the queens um, in the Bible. We will still continue with ladies um, who seem to be in the cut, who seem to be um, ignored, who seem to be overlooked, and yet God put them in a precise place, plan, and position for his will to be accomplished. Again, we are called woman. And that word woman carries with it the connotation of one who has influence and wealth because God put it in us. I'm not talking about material influence, material wealth. I'm talking about spiritual influence and spiritual wealth. And he has deposited that on the inside of us. And once we tap into it, you'll see things from a whole different perspective. So today we're going to talk about Bathsheba. We're going to talk about um, Bathsheba in a different light than what she's normally um, portrayed in. We're not going to talk about her discretions with David. We're not going to discuss whether or what well, we might touch on it, but we won't go deeply into it. But we're not going to discuss um, very much whether or not she had a right to choose to uh, go to the king or whether she was bathing to be seen by the king, which the scriptures don't support that at all. Because let me just say this, the scriptures do not support that. For those that think that Bathsheba was outside showing her goods to the king on purpose, the scriptures do not support that. Because what the scriptures do support is that in 2 Samuel chapter 11, that it was a time of war when the kings go out to war and battle. Her husband was already out there in the battle. In the community's mind, the king was also out there in the battle. Okay, so um, she wasn't out there just showing her stuff off for the king to be, you know, aroused and call her into his palace and all of these things that we think sometimes women are doing for um, different reasons than really what the right reason is. And she was simply purifying herself from her monthly cycle. That's what she was doing. And it just so happened that these things started falling into place because David was not out at war where he most likely should have been. All right, so let's move on. So we're going to talk about Bathsheba now as an intercessor, as, as a go-between, one who has, um, she has access to the king, King David. She has access to Nathan the prophet, and he has access to her as well to give her guidance and instruction. But Bathsheba is standing in the place of her son, and she's standing in his place as an intercessor because there are some things that another brother of Solomon has put into place to try to steal the rightful place that Solomon the heir had as being king. So let's get into this. We're in 1 Kings chapter 1. Um, I'm going through verses 10 through 12. And, and if you read 1 through 10, you'll get the gist of the story. But in this point, um, Adonijah, who is Solomon's brother, is trying to take the throne away from him. So listen to this, and then you'll see how Bathsheba uh, plays into, into this whole scenario. But Nathan the prophet and Benaiah and the mighty men and Solomon, his brother, he called not. So Adonijah had set up this big regalia, this big party, this big um, to-do, um, and he called all, he called the priests. He, so he had religious backing. He called the government. And so he had governmental backing. He had backing from the army. And he had all of these people that he called to this event, to this regalia, this big ball. Isn't it interesting how it's always around a party? That's a side note. And so he called them to this big ball and um, this big event. And, um, Adonijah was beginning to set himself up as the king. He was trying, he had already won the hearts of the people. If I was the king, I would, do you know how, how politicians do that? 
if I was in charge, I would make sure this and this and this was in place. And if I was in charge, I would make sure this and this and this was done away with. And so Adonijah had that same political mindset. It's nothing new. This is way back in the day. And Adonijah had set up this, this event so that he could begin to present himself as the king when he wasn't rightfully set up to be the king. Verse 11, wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, doth reign? And David, our Lord, knoweth it not. So two things going on. Adonijah, he's not really reigning. He's just setting himself up as the king, but he hasn't been crowned officially the king. And David is not aware of it. David is old. David has grown old. David's reign is about to end. And there is need, a need for a new king to sit up on the throne. But David already had in his heart and mind that Solomon, his son, would be the next king. Verse 12. So Nathan is telling Bathsheba about all of this stuff that's going on, and David is not aware of it. So verse 12, this is Nathan now speaking to Bathsheba. Now, therefore, come, let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel. So the first thing we understand about, about Bathsheba as she is getting involved in this scenario is she is willing to listen to advice. We're talking about queens. Now, we're talking about wise queens now. We're not talking about Athaliah or Jezebel. We're talking about good queens, wise queens. And, she, and unfortunately, Bathsheba wasn't even called the queen at this point. She was David's wife. And she was, um, she was David's wife. I'll say, so in, in verse 12, now, therefore, Nathan says, come, let me pray. Let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel that thou mayest, what? Save thine own life and the life of thy son. Because if Adonijah gets in this position, you better believe he's going to wipe out anything and everyone that is a threat to him. That's a promise. And so Nathan, in his wisdom, speaks to uh, Bathsheba and says, let me tell you how to handle this. So as a queen, we have to be open to wise instructions. Write that down. Get a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, a marking pen, whatever you need to write with and write that down. Number one, we have to be open to wise counsel. Notice Bathsheba didn't take this matter into her own hands. We have to be open to wise counsel. Ladies, God has a place, a plan, and a position for us. And if we will function in that plan, that place, and that position, we will always have God to back us up. So she was open to wise counsel. I'm going to 1 Kings 1, 15 and 17. And so between 12 and 15, Nathan is giving Bathsheba instructions about how to handle this situation. This is how it plays out. Starting in verse 15, and Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber and the king was very old. And Abishag, this Shunammite, ministered unto the king. Now, let me say this about Abishag because she gets a bad rap too. She was a young woman who was called to be um, a nursemaid to the king and simply to keep him comfortable. They did not have a thing going on. Let's get that straight. David was old, okay? They didn't have a thing going on. She was simply a nursemaid to David to keep him comfortable while he's going through this transition. And so Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto the king, and Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. What's number two? She humbled herself. Completely different from Athaliah and Jezebel, she humbled herself. She bowed before the king. She did obeisance unto the king. She humbled herself. And the king said, and he responded to that. That would be a great lesson for us to learn as women and as wives. We're still all a work in progress, but it would be a great lesson for us to learn how to present ourselves to the one in authority. 
It seems to come across that you get things accomplished a lot better. That's for sure. And so the king said, what wouldest thou? In other words, what can I do for you? What is it that you want? What can I, you know, how can I help you? And she said unto him, my Lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thy handmaid. Number three, she puts him in remembrance of the vow that he made. She said, my Lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thine handmaid. This is what you promised me, saying, assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And David, in fact, did make that promise to Bathsheba, that Solomon would indeed sit upon the throne after David. I believe she was doing two things. She was reminding him, number one, that he promised that Solomon would sit on the throne. But I believe also as a woman, she was reminding him, if it were not for you, I would not even be in this situation. Basically, you owe me a solid, David. <laughs> you owe me a huge favor. And so while David is uh, reminiscing about all of the scenarios that happened, how he um, saw her bathing and lust filled his heart and he called her, I guess we are going to talk about it from this point of view. He called her to come to him him and she came to him and they say in that day women had no choice they had no choice it was either your life or you know um you do what you were told and so anyway she um she came to him um because he beckoned her and they had relations she got pregnant that child died this woman went through a lot with david she went through a lot of heartache and hardship with David at David's request. And I believe she's just reminding him, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. <laughs> and so with that thought in mind, David's memory is peaked to the point where he's like, you know what, you're right. I believe that in his mind, that's what he's saying. You're absolutely right. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here in the first place. So let me keep my word. Let me be a man who keeps my word. And so um, I'm looking for 1 Kings 16 through 2, 19. And so she's telling him, you know, um, you said that my son would reign on the throne after you. Um, and now behold, Adonijah, your other son, is reigning. He wasn't officially reigning, though. It, it was a fallacy. It, it, was, it wasn't official. He was taking on the role of the king that he didn't have the right to take. And so she's saying, behold, Adonijah reigneth. And now, my lord, the king, thou knowest it not, knowest it not. Well, of course he doesn't know it. He's sitting, he's laying in his sick bed. He's literally laying on his deathbed. And he's not aware of what Adonijah is doing behind the scenes. He is not aware that Adonijah has stolen the hearts of the people and that he has, you know, put on this big shebang um, to crown himself as king. Now, no real king crowns himself as king. He is actually crowned by the king to take his place as the future king. He's crowning himself as king. As king. And she's saying, and you don't even know it. You don't know what's going on. And this is what he's done. And he has slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance. I mean, they have a barbecue like no other barbecue. And has called all the sons of the king and Abiathar the priest and Joab the captain of the host. But Solomon thy servant hath he not called. Everybody got invited to the party but Solomon. But Solomon, Nathan, and Bathsheba. <laughs> and a few others. And thou, my Lord, O King, the eyes of all Israel are upon thee. Listen to how she is wording her. Actually, Nathan told her to say this. Nathan is telling her what to say, to put David in remembrance. Remembrance from day one up until now. All eyes of Israel are up on thee like they always have been. 
David, Israel has always been looking at you. Israel has been has always been looking up to you. Israel has always been looking to you for answers and solutions and victory in their wartime, in their challenges. And thou, my Lord, O King, the eyes of all Israel are upon thee, that thou shouldest tell them who shall sit on the throne of my Lord, the King, after him. Because they're looking for leadership. They understand, and Bathsheba understands, and Nathan understands that the people need leadership. They need good leadership. And she's explaining this to her husband at Nathan's um, instructions. Otherwise it shall come to pass when my Lord, the King shall sleep with his fathers that I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. She said, our lives are on the line. My life and your son's life are on the line. So as she began to keep talking, Nathan came in because this was the plan. So Nathan came. So Nathan came in and he basically said the same thing that he told um, Bathsheba to say. And Nathan said, and Nathan said, my Lord, O king, hast thou said Adonijah shall reign after me and he shall sit upon my throne? He's asking him, did you make that promise somewhere that we're not aware of? For he has gone down this day and has slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance. See how they said the same thing. And hath called all the king's sons and the captains of the host and Abiathar the priest. And behold, they eat and drink before him and say, God save King Adonijah. But, he, but me, even me, thy servant, this is Nathan talking. But me, even me, thy servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and thy servant Solomon, hath he not called? All of us who would be on the opposite end, uh, on the like this tug of war, we would be on the other end of the rope. He didn't call us. Is this thing done by my lord the king? He listen to what Nathan is saying. Did you approve of this? Did you put your seal of approval? Did you did you stamp this with your, you know, that seal? And thou hast not showed it unto thy servant. You didn't tell me who should sit on the throne of my Lord, the king after him. Then David said, I believe David kind of sat up as sick as he was, as weak as he was. I believe something on the inside rose him up in his heart, in his spirit. And he said, the king and the king David answered and said, call me Bathsheba. So now Bathsheba intervened. Um, alone with David. And now Nathan has intervened alone with David. And he said, call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. Again, she was not in there trying to, uh, she wasn't in there what, doing all of this. And you said, she wasn't doing none of that. And the king swore and said, as the Lord liveth, that hath redeemed my soul out of all distress, even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. I'm telling you, David's dander got up. He said, we're going to settle this thing once and for all. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, let my Lord King David live forever. And King David said, call me Zadok the priest, Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet, prophet and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And they came before the king. The king also said unto, listen, listen to this. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Adonijah is on one side having this big old blast of a party. He's got all kinds of people. I mean, government officials. He's got the priestly organization. He's got people that are high in command in the army having this big old party, this big old affair while he crowns himself as king. I don't know, maybe let's say hundreds of people there. And then here is David in his bedchamber. It doesn't say he even went to sit on his throne. In his bedchamber, weak as a newborn lamb, calling together these few people 
while he's getting ready to anoint his son as king, appoint his son as king. The king also said unto them, take with you the servants of your Lord and cause Solomon, my son, to ride up on my own mule and bring him down to Gihon. Okay. So he's, he's putting into plan what they need to do in order for this thing to be official. Now, when one is riding upon a mule, they are coming in a spirit and attitude of peace. When they're coming riding on a horse, they're coming in a spirit and an attitude of war. So David was sending Solomon in an attitude of peace, even though Adonijah was against him all altogether. It says, and let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him their king over Israel. David was so weak, he could not even go down to Gihon to, a, to crown his own son. I'm glad I saw that. To crown his own son as king. Thank you, Lord. He sent Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet to anoint him their king over Israel. We know when, when um, Saul got anointed as king, Samuel went down as the prophet to anoint him as king. And blow ye with the trumpet and say, God save King Solomon. Then ye shall come up after him that he may come and sit upon my throne, for he shall be king in my stead, and I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. And let me just make this note before we close this out. Over Israel and over Judah, because Israel and Judah were split. They had had a nation, a national split where there were 10 tribes in the northern kingdom out of Israel, and there were two tribes in the southern kingdom out of Israel. Uh, the northern kingdom was called Israel. The southern kingdom was called Judah. And God's intention was to bring unity back to the people. God is about unifying people. He's not about destroying people. He's not about separating people. He's not about causing divisions among people. God is about unifying people. So anything else other than that, where you see division and disunity, disharmony um, and, and separation, that is not God. That's not the God of heaven and earth. Amen. Let me put it like that. And so um, so he wants to bring um, unity between Israel and Judah. And then he says, And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, answered the king and said, Amen. The Lord God of my Lord, the king, say so too. And the Lord hath been with my Lord, the king, even so be he, as the Lord hath been with my Lord, the king, even so be he with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord, King David. And at the end, I want to get to the bottom of this because that did happen. And so at the end, um, Bathsheba, her intervention her intercession on Solomon's behalf, even on her own behalf with the king, was a success. So we can learn from Bathsheba. Number one, she was willing to hear wise counsel from Nathan, who gave her a godly plan on how to handle this situation. She didn't take matters into her own hands. She listened to godly counsel and advice, and she followed through with that. And then Nathan came in and backed up what she said. The, 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 third, the second thing is she humbled herself before the king. Whether he was weak and, you know, as a newborn lamb or strong as a oak tree, she still humbled herself before the king. She made her request known unto him. She made her request known unto him. And then she waited for um, the king to make the right decision. Those are things we can learn from Bathsheba. I know she gets a bad rap, but really, if we if we follow through the scriptures and read and understand and gain some knowledge about how things played out in Bathsheba's life, we'll understand she's a great example for us to follow. Those four things are great examples for us ladies 
to follow, for us to um, implement and put into our lives, that we may ask God, how do I, if I'm in this place and in this position where something is unfair that's happening in my life, something is out of sorts, it's not what it was said that it would be, this is a great way to um, to see how that plays out to your favor and to your advantage without you, without us taking control, but leaving the control and the final outcome in the hands of the Lord. Amen. This is Danette Hutchinson with Monday Manna. I pray that something was said to encourage your heart, your hope, your faith, your trust, and your confidence in God and in God alone. As we continue on your own to study the queens of the Bible, look for positive things that you would love to implement, not just implement in your own life, but also pass on to the future generations that are coming. Because as long as we're having babies and we're having girl babies, they need to know these things as well. So this is not just for right now. This is for generations to come to teach them the ways of the scriptures that bring about positive results. Again, I will say that there is a recap on the Queens coming to be posted on Facebook as well um, with Pastor Hutchinson from Open Door Ministries. Next week, we will continue with our series, So Glad to Be Called Woman. And we're gonna look at some women that seem to be in the cut they seem to be ignored and overlooked, and yet God is using them in great ways. Remember, ladies, whatever place, plan, and purpose God has for us is going to work out for us. Have a blessed day.